we'll start with verse number one. John chapter number one, verse number one. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, again for this opportunity to gather in the house of the Lord. Thank you, God, for all your goodness and your grace to us. Bless us now, I pray around the word of God. Lord, help us to rightly divide the word of truth. God, forgive me my sin and failure. And God, may, Lord, whatever said here and done this morning, Lord, whatever is done, we pray that it be done to thy glory. In Jesus' name, amen. John chapter number one. Again, thank you for coming to the house of the Lord today. If you're here visiting, make yourself home here at God's house today. John's gospel is different from the other gospels in that he... Uh, begins in, with the public ministry of Christ just in a few chapters. And uh, it's the only gospel that does not have a recollection, uh, you know, uh, as the others do, of the birth of Christ. And yet we find that here also. We still find the story here, but we don't find it as in, as, in uh, as much detail. And John is the forerunner of Christ. He is the one that came preparing the way as we'll read to you here in the scripture just in a moment. And uh, the gospel of John has been a great, of great interest to many people and been a great blessing to many people. And my favorite verse is in John chapter number 1. And we might get to that this morning, we might not. And, but we'll see. But let's begin reading in John chapter number 1, in verse number 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. Jesus is the Word. And here he, we find that Jesus has always been with God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are inseparable from eternity past to eternally, eternity future. They are always uh, together and they are inseparable. Although they have different offices, they are still one and, and will eternally be one. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Jesus is light. Now, how many of you, how many of you here this morning would agree with me that we are living in dark days? How many? Now, and it is dark days. You look around at the world and you look at, at the way uh, things are going in this world and it seem, seemingly everything seems to be a dark day. But for the believer, this is one of the most exciting hours that you and I can live in. I mean, it is, it is a blessing to live in these days. It is a blessing to live today knowing that we are uh, the light to this lost and dying world. Jesus said, he said, in him was life, the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not, or the darkness couldn't catch up with it. And that's my Jesus. No matter how dark the world may be, Jesus is the light of the world. And the darkness of this world cannot overcome the brightness of the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the, in the world that we live in, we as believers should let our, so let our light shine in this dark day so that the people of this world could see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Jesus is the light of the world. And he wants you and he wants uh, me to be lights in, this, in these days of darkness that we live in. I don't listen, I'm telling you, I don't know if we'll ever live to see another Christmas day. Amen. I believe the coming of the Lord is that close. I don't know that we'll get to celebrate an Easter sunrise service again this year. I don't know that we're going to get to have our watch night service this Wednesday night. I don't know. We're that close to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes to get us from this place. But friend, until that day comes that he comes for us, we are the light of the world. We are those that will, can shine in this a uh, dark world to let others see that there's something great about Jesus. Amen? And I'll be the first one to admit I did, I did not do as good a job last year of letting my light shine before men as I want to do. 
I see a lot of improvement in my life. I see a lot of way to improve in my life in letting my light shine before the world. God help me to let my light so shine before men. Why? Because Jesus is the light of the world. And in this dark world, our light cannot be overcome by darkness. Amen. The darkness cannot overcome the bright light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, John begins this way and then it begins to talk about John himself. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now, everybody in here that's saved by the grace of God has a job to do as a Christian. We've got a job to do as a believer. I've got a job to do as a Christian in this world. John had a job to do. He was sent from God. Now, friend, I don't know what you can do. I don't know what your talent may be. I don't know what God wants to use you to do in this world. But whatever it is, we should go uh, wholeheartedly into doing that and to try our best to do what God wants us to do in this dark world that we live in. Why? Because Jesus is the light of the world. And the Bible says in Him is no darkness at all. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through Him might believe. John came for a witness to bear witness of the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says He was not that light, but He came, He was sent to bear witness of that light. John wasn't the light of the world. John was a messenger. John was one that came to bear witness of the light. Everyone in here this morning can bear witness of the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to do that. We, listen, we ought to be all excited today. We just celebrated the birth of the Lamb of God that comes to take away the sin of the world. Amen? And I hope it was extra special to you this year. I hope it was better this year than it ever has been when you sat around and you remembered what Jesus did, how He came for you, how He came for me. Amen? Listen, we ought to be, we ought to be uh, joyous to be able to bear witness of the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, this dark world is going to hell in a handbasket. This dark world is going to hell head over heels and, and on their way. The world is on a slippery slope and many, most people that you come in contact with are not Christians. And I'll say this again and again, there's a lot of religious people in this world, but there's not very many born-again believers, ch children of God that are saved by the grace of God. And friend, the one of the most... One of the most dangerous places a person could be is to be religious and lost. One of the most dangerous places anyone can be is to be full of religion and yet lost without the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. I'm feeling a little better about right now. Hallelujah to God. I'm glad I'm saved by the grace of God. I'm glad I'm His and I'm glad He's mine. And I'm glad to know that one day in the dark world that I lived in, in the darkness of sin that I was, Jesus came in and shed the light of salvation upon this old boy's soul. And I got saved by the grace of God. John was sent to bear witness of that light. Now, verse number 9. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. The religious crowd would not receive the Lord Jesus Christ. But the promise is here, but as many as received him... To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Salvation is still, my friend, by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, not a word, lest any man should boast. And Jesus came as a light in the world that whosoever would call upon his name should be saved and whosoever will accept the light of his salvation can be saved by God's grace and can, can know in your heart that when you leave this world, you're going into the presence of the Lord. Amen. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but were born of God. And the world was made flesh, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Here is the account of Christ coming into the world according to the Gospel of John. The Word being the Lord Jesus Christ, He is the Word. 
The Word became flesh, born of a virgin, became flesh, and dwelled among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of Him, and cried, saying, This was He whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for He was before me, and of His fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Friend, I'm glad. Let me stop right there just a minute and tell you that I'm glad I'm not living under the law. Amen? I'm glad that I'm not living under those days of law that Moses lived under and that the Old Testament saints lived under and that the, at, at the, up until this point of Christ coming to the world, everyone lived under that law which nobody could keep up with the law. Nobody could could uh, could uh, come up to the standards that God had. And every year, priests would have to go and offer sacrifice for the sins to atone and just to cover those for a little while till the Lamb of God came and paid her sin debt. Hallelujah. I'm glad I'm not under the law, but I'm under grace. Amen. I'm glad I don't have to, I don't have to worry about all the Old Testament law because Jesus fulfilled the law. Every jot and every tittle, he... He fulfilled the law, and he paid my sin debt that I could not pay. I'm glad I'm not under the law, but I'm under grace. But, friend, I'm telling you, grace does not give me license to live like I want to live. Grace does not give me license to live like the flesh wants to live. But grace draws me closer to the Lamb of God. Grace draws me closer to him, knowing that I'm saved by grace and that he fulfilled the law for me. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And this is the record of John, <coughs> when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? Now, the religious crowd is already stirred up because John's preaching the gospel. John is preaching salvation's gospel through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's preaching grace through the Lord Jesus Christ and the religious crowd comes upon him and he confessed and denied not but confessed, I'm not the Christ. And they ask him, what then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he's answered, no, I'm not that prophet Elias. I'm not Jesus. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. John said, I am that voice. I am just the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As said the prophet Isaiah. Or Isaiah. He said, I'm just a voice. I'm just one crying in the wilderness. God help us as believers that this coming year we will be a voice to those that are, that are in this wilderness of sin, that are in this dark world. God help us that we'll be a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Amen. All God needs is us to have, use our voice for him. Preacher, I can't talk to people. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Let me tell you something. Every one of us in here have got a have got a tongue to speak with. And it seems like we can talk about everything under the sun except to give we kind of get shut la shut lipped and shut mouth when it comes to talking about the things of God. Why is that so? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, the old flesh, it goes against the old flesh. Number two, the devil will try his best to suppress you from talking about the Lamb of God. All through the scripture and all through time, the devil has tried to shut the mouths of those that would promote the gospel. And so the devil will try to do that. But God help us that we would be a voice. If, listen, if you want to proclaim the gospel, if you want to proclaim the grace of God in the coming days in years and maybe in your life, then what you need to do and what I need to do is say, God, give me direction. God, give me boldness. God, give me a voice that I might proclaim 
the word of God to many that will listen and that will hear. You say, well, I got nobody to listen to. Listen, social media has its place. I see a lot of verses from people on social media that people will read that may never read nothing else. So you can't apply that, amen? People, people are all time down on it, but I'm telling you, we, I have tried my best to use it to promote the gospel in many different ways, modern technology. And listen, we've been able to get the voice of the church out in places we never would have if it wasn't for modern technology. You've got a voice. Now, don't use that for an excuse not to talk to people, though. And if you'll, if you'll start your days, if you'll start your weeks by saying, Lord, give me opportunity sometime this day, sometime this week to name the name of Christ, God will give you an opportunity. And you, if you'll just make, say the first words, I promise you, God will fill your mouth. God will fill your mouth and you'll be able to tell them about Jesus. Because once you get started and you realize how big it is in your heart and how big it is in your life, then, friend, I'm telling you, there's no greater story to tell than the story of the saving grace of God. And I love to tell the story. How many of you in here like to hunt or fish? Men and women. Hallelujah. I'm glad there's some women like to fish and hunt. Amen. Let me tell you something. How many of you like to tell of the last big fish you caught or the, or the last big buck you saw in the woods? Well, that's a story to tell, ain't it? But you know what? And it's easy to tell that story. But I'm telling you what, it's much better when you start telling the story of the Lamb of God that come to take away the sin of the world. Or you begin to tell people how that they don't have to die and go to hell. And once you get started, friend, it gets so big in you, you get the one to talk about it to that lost person till they'll either listen or run. Amen. There's nothing boring about salvation's plan. God, help us to have the boldness to proclaim the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Now, he said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord as said by the prophet his eyes, and they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered and them said, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. John said, I'm baptizing in the name of Jesus. I'm baptizing, and there's one standing among you whom you know not. And he is standing there, and he is boldly and answering their questions that they've got. And then John does this. He, he it is who coming after me is preferred before me. He said, Jesus is better than I am. He says, you'll see him here in a little while. He said, I'm the forerunner of the Lamb of God, and you're going to see him in a little bit. And he said, I'm not even worthy. He said, He's, he is, he is, uh, I'm before him, but he is greater than I. He said, he's so great that he said, it is he, uh, he it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it, I'm not worthy to unloose. John says, I'm not even more, I'm worthy to reach down and unlatch his sandal. These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan where John was baptizing. So John was baptizing. Who was he baptizing? Those that would believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He wasn't baptizing them for salvation. Baptism has always been this. You're baptized to show the world that you're dead to the old things and you're alive forevermore to the Lamb of God. Amen. Somebody said, well, I, I was baptized when I was young or I was baptized when I was middle-aged and I was baptized to take away my sin. Old preacher said, you might baptize a sinner and you might baptize a lost man and what will happen to him, he'll go down a wet, uh, dry sinner and come up a wet sinner. Amen. Come up a wet lost man. I'm telling you, John was baptizing those that would call upon the name of the Lord for salvation. Amen. I'm glad to be a Baptist too, by the way. I might get into that later, but not this morning. Now, verse number 29. John was doing, the, verse 28, These things were done in Bethbara beyond Jordan where John was baptizing. The next day, John was doing the same thing. He was baptizing. When they came, when the Pharisees came to see him, John was baptizing. And they questioned him. 
Well, John didn't just do it that one day and quit, but the next day John was baptizing. And there he was. He was back down doing what God had called him to do. He was preaching. People were listening. People were getting saved. And John was baptizing them. But the next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him. While he was down there baptizing, he might have had one, he might have had one with, his, with, his, with his hand on the back of his head and his, and his hand over his mouth. And he might have just fixed to say that he was going to baptize them. And then he stopped. He looks and he points and he says, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. I'm telling you, friend, you might not be able to do one thing but point people to Jesus and say, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. The next day John sees Jesus coming to him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Now that's been my life verse. I got a hold of that about 30, 40 years ago, somewhere along there. No, I want 40 years ago. Good grief. Amen. 30 years ago, 35 years ago, I got a hold of that verse. God drove it into my heart and pointed me and said, if you can get if you can go through your life and get people to behold the Lamb of God, you're doing what I want you to do. Amen. And if I can point people toward Jesus, if I can do exactly what John was wanting to do, he didn't have a great big thing he was going on. He was baptizing and he started pointing people to Calvary. Amen. He started pointing people to the Lamb of God. And you say, preacher, I can't do any of that. I can't tell people how to be saved. I can't talk to people. Listen, our, our, listen, our command out of the scripture is to tell people, is to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We say, well, I can't go to all the world. You can help do it by sending somebody else. But listen, our job is to tell others the fruit of a Christian is another Christian. And friend, we ought to bear fruit. We ought to be fruit-bearing Christians in this world that we live in. And listen, there was, I'll tell you this story, and then we're going to be through because I never even got to my message, but that's all right. We'll tell it again. But listen to me. There was this old fellow that was deaf and dumb, and I've told it, you may remember. But if I, listen, if I like to tell it, you've got to like to hear it. Amen. Because if I get tired of telling it, I won't tell it. But there was this uh, there was this fellow that kept coming to a camp meeting. And he kept coming to that tent revival. He, he'd come every night. He couldn't hear. And he couldn't talk. But he could see. And that preacher up there preaching his heart out every night. And he's preaching salvation. He was preaching, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be safe. And the... the, the don't take this wrong, but this is just this is a real story, and this is what the, what everybody called this man. His name was Dummy Brown, because Dummy Brown couldn't hear and Dummy Brown couldn't talk, but he'd come to that camp meeting. Now let me ask you, Brother X, what sense does it make for a dumb man and a, a man that can't talk and can't uh, hear to come to a camp meeting? I don't know, but I'm gonna tell you something. He came and he kept coming and he kept coming. And he got down there one night and the preacher made the altar call. And old Dummy Brown, all he could, he could grunt and groan, but he couldn't say a word. And here come Dummy Brown down to the altar. People have been getting saved. People have been walking the aisle. And people have been getting saved. But here come old Dummy Brown down to the altar. And he said he got down on his knees at the altar. And he just went out to, oh, oh. Preacher said, I don't know what to do. He said, he can't hear me. I can't take my Bible out to read to him and tell him the plan of salvation. Lord, if this one gets saved, you're going to have to do it. And he said, right after he said that, he realized what a dumb statement that came out of his mouth. He said, God, if anybody gets saved, you've got to do it. But he said, all I knew to do was get down beside old dummy Brown. And he said, I got down beside old dummy Brown. And he said, I called out to God. He said, I told him what to do. He said, God, God translated what I said into what he needed to hear. And he said, and a few minutes later, old dummy Brown got up, got to praise the Lord and, and waving his hands about and hollering, and out the door he went. Well, the next night, here come count me. Now listen, our job in life, you listen to me real good, this is a good story, this is true. Our job in life is to do one thing. That's point people toward Jesus. You may be the best singer in the, in the choir. You may be the best Sunday school teacher in the church. But your main objective is to point people toward, toward Christ. Said the next morning, said, 
Or the next evening, camp meantime, preacher's there, and there's four or five people there, and he's wondering, oh, what have I done? Where's everybody at? It's time to start. Where's everybody at? And about five minutes, four time to start, here come one long car up through there, and they said, where's everybody at? And the fellow in that car said, man, preacher, you've got to go see this. He said, you just got to go see this. There's a traffic jam down the road, and you've got to go see what's going on. Said he went down there and said there was a big long straight and there was a curve around the road. And said just on the other side of that curve stood Dummy Brown. And he'd made him a cross and put it up on the bank on that curve. And everybody that come down that straightaway had to stop as he stood in the middle of the road and pointed people toward the cross. And he couldn't say anything, but he was crying and pointing to the cross. And, ah, ah, hey, friend, I'm telling you, you might not be able to say a word, but you can point people toward the cross. That's the end of that story. I don't know what ever happened. But I about imagine that that young, man, that young dummy brown or old dummy brown, whatever, however old, I'm sure that there were some people come to the Lord because he was doing what he knew to do. And I'm telling you, friend, tonight as we leave this year behind and we begin a new year uh, coming up, I'm telling you, we ought to determine our heart and mind. I'm going to do one thing in life this year. I don't believe in making a bunch of New Year's resolutions. I'll do it. Because they don't last. If it's something I need to be doing, I just need to be doing it. Amen? But it ought to be a determination and a goal in their life this coming year that we point more people to Christ than we did. Preacher, I didn't do a good job last year. I didn't either. But this year I want to do better. Amen? Telling people about the Lamb of God. Pointing people toward Calvary. Old friend. What a blessing it'll be in our lives if we can point one person to the cross and they get saved this year. You think about it. Of what they, 65, 60, some people in here this morning? Crowd's a little, no, you're not a little off, amen. I believe you're all all right, but not, a few, not as many people here as you usually are. But you think about this. If every person in here would win one soul to the Lord this coming year, we'd have a house full. You think about that. And I challenge you to make it your personal goal in life is to win one person to the Lord this year and bring them to the house of God. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. Lord, I thank you for your help. God, these things cannot be done, Lord, except you do it. And Lord, we thank you for your help this morning. Bless, I pray. And Lord, help us to point people to Jesus. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. While every head's bowed, no one looking around. I wonder if there's a believer in the building this morning.